Drawing basic shapes in Silhouette Studio really is very simple. You're going to notice that there are some shapes on the left side of your screen over here, and as you move your cursor over these, you'll see that it says draw a line, draw a rectangle, draw a rounded rectangle, draw an ellipse, and if you go further, you'll see draw a polygon, draw a curve shape, draw a freehand, draw a smooth freehand, draw an arc, and draw a regular polygon. I'm not going to go into the others right now, it's just these shapes, and in fact these are the basic shapes up here. One thing to remember is if you want a perfect square, click the rectangle button, hold down your shift key, and draw out your square. If you let it go before you finish drawing, you get a rectangle. If you hold it, finish, let go of your mouse button, and then lift the button, then you'll have your perfect square. The same is true for a circle. Click the ellipse button to draw an oval. Just drag out your mouse button and let go. If you want a perfect square, sorry, not a perfect square, a perfect circle, hold down your shift button and draw out your circle let go of the mouse button before you left, let go of the shift button. And that's really basically all there is to drawing basic shapes. That there are two settings in Silhouette Studio. You can have it so that when you finish drawing something, you can draw another one of the same right after. Or you can have it so that Silhouette immediately acts as if you had pressed the select icon or click the arrow up here. When you do that and you next do something on your mat, it will select your items and move them around rather than draw new items. You can have two different choices in your settings in Silhouette. You can have it so that once you finish drawing a shape, a single shape, you the next time you press your mouse button on your mat, you'll be selecting your shape. Or you can have it where the next time you move your, you, you, you press the mouse button over your mat, it will draw another shape for you. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If you go into your settings, which is at the bottom right down here, it's your preferences pane. To change your settings, go into your preferences panel down here, the second to last gear symbol, Choose Selection, and then if you have Continue Drawing Shapes selected, when you finish drawing one shape and you click on the mat again, you'll be drawing another shape, and I'll show you how that works. This is what's selected now for drawing shapes. I'm going to choose the ellipse, and I'm going to draw, and look, I still have the crosshair as a mouse cursor. If I put my mouse, if I click my mouse and drag it out, I'm drawing another shape again. To change that behavior, I need to choose select over here for shapes. Then if I draw a shape, I had to click apply, sorry about that. Um, the next time I draw a shape then, so I'll draw my shape, here's my first shape as a circle. Now you see that my cursor has changed to an arrow. So it's as if this button had been clicked. So that the next thing that happens when I click on the mat, it's selecting my shapes. Or I can draw a box around shapes for them to be selected. I'm going to go back and change that behavior again so you understand. I will click Selection, and I'm going to change this to Continue Drawing Shapes. I'll click Apply. I'm going to choose my ellipse and I'm going to drag out a shape. Click the mouse, drag out a shape. Click the mouse, drag out a shape. I'm going to go in and change that setting under selection, and I'm going to change it to select. I'm going to choose the ellipse. I'm going to draw a shape. I forgot to click apply again. I'm sorry about that. Click apply. I will draw an ellipse, let it go, and my mouse cursor has changed to an arrow. I'm going to do that one more time. 
I'm going to remove all of these pieces. Starting to get a little bit confusing. I'll do it again so it's really clear and I won't forget to press apply. I'm going to click my preferences pane down at the bottom right. I'm going to choose selection. I'm going to change this to continue drawing shapes. I'll click apply. I will draw an ellipse. Let it go and you'll see that I still have a crosshair as a cursor. Click and drag and I have another circle. And that will continue until I click this button. Then I'll be able to select my shapes. But if I go and draw another shape, I'll draw my shape, let it go, draw another shape, let it go. And notice how that cursor is still a crosshair until I click the arrow. And then I can select my shapes. With the other behavior, I'm going to go click the Preferences pane. I'm going to click Selection. I'm going to change it to choose Select. I'm going to click Apply. And now, if I choose to draw a circle, notice my cursor. I draw out my circle, and now it changes to an arrow immediately. So that means I can immediately now select my shape. And if I want to draw another circle, I'm going to have to click Circle again. Let it go. I have an arrow. Click Circle and draw it out. So if you wanted to draw a whole bunch of shapes, you can go and change that setting temporarily. There's another very important setting in here, and that's whether shapes will be selected by touching the drag box or by enclosing the drag box. And I'm going to show you the difference. Right now I have it set so that shapes only need to be touched by my drag box. My drag box is the box that appears when I drag out the mouse like this with the button pressed down. So if I drag over shapes, you'll see that as soon as I'm touching that shape, they're selected. And as I move down here, you'll see that the next three shapes are going to be selected immediately. I don't have to select the whole thing. If I change this to select shapes enclosed by the drag box and don't forget to click apply, now when I drag a drag box around, you'll see they're not being selected until the entire shape is selected. That means that you have to select the entire shape before it will be selected. I'm going to go back and change that again to show you under selection select shapes touching the drag box. I'm just going to click away from there so that nothing is selected. And now as I drag over the, whoops, I forgot to click apply. Never forget to click apply because then things don't work the way you expect them. Okay, I'm going to make sure that I have that selected the way I want it. Select shapes, okay, by touching rather than enclosing. So the minute I touch a shape, it will be selected. See? The entire thing is not selected. And the same thing here. As soon as I touch it, it's selected. I'm going to go back and change it again just so that you understand fully. Click Apply. Click Away so that nothing is selected. And I will start dragging a box and you'll see nothing is selected yet even though I am touching those shapes. I have to fully enclose them in the dragging box before they will be selected. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my settings and put that back to the default that I use, which is to select shapes by touching. The other thing in this selection preferences is that you can choose how the cursor behaves for multiple different shape types. You can choose either select or continue drawing shapes for your shapes. You can select it differently for drawing freehand for using the eraser and for using the knife. So now I want to save my project. So what I'll do is I'll click File, Save As, and I can save either as a version 3 or as a legacy version 2 file format. You would want to save in version 2 if you have colleagues or friends who are using version 2 and you want to be able to share files between each other. If you don't have that issue and you want to save as version 3, which has more advanced functions, then just click Save As. And then what you need to do is 
choose the location on your hard disk where you want to save them. I save cutting files on an external hard drive in a digital cutting files folder by topic. And I have folders for all kinds of different topics. For example, I've got one that's for shapes. I'll put that in there and I'm just going to call this miscellaneous. Actually, I'm going to call it miscellaneous junk so that I'll know that I can delete it later on. I don't need to keep this for any reason. Then I'll click OK and it's saved on my hard drive. If you want to put this in your library, you need to click File, Save As, and then Save to Library. That will then put that in your own designs folder. Here it is right here. It's already got that file name because I had assigned it before. And it's now saved in your library. If you move to another area of your library and you go back to my own designs, you'll see that it's right here. I'm going to close the library and I'm going to open it up back up again so that you can see that your shapes are here. Let's say that I didn't, that I hadn't already saved that. So I'm going to close the library by clicking this X. I'm going to just put a circle on here and I'm going to save this to my library. Here's my circle shape. I haven't named it yet. So I can name it over here. I'm going to call this a miscellaneous circle junk so that I'll know I can delete it later on. I can assign keywords to it. More than one if I like. How many word ways can I describe a circle, right? I can, or how many keywords can I assign to a circle that would be descriptive? I can then describe it. This is just a circle. I can put my name in here if I want. I can categorize whether this is a regular cut, print and cut, rhinestone cut, a sketch design, 3D craft, or a font. So this is a regular cut, and then I'll close this. So when I close the library, if I open it up again and I look under my own designs, I'll find my miscellaneous circle junk over here, and here's the other file that I saved earlier. If I want to move this to another library, I could do that. Let's say I want to put this into split monograms. I just select it, drag it over to the library, to, to the folder that I want, and you'll see it's there now. Don't want it there, so I'm just going to delete it. Okay, and then uh, let's see, back to my own designs. I have deleted my file now, so be careful doing that. If you decide you don't want it in a folder and you delete it, it's gone. And if you don't have it on your screen anymore, you'll have to recreate it. So that's about it for saving files. Um, that's it. So thank you so much for um, subscribing to my classes. Please let me know if there's anything that I can help you with.